and and I get it. You know, we you know we're walking around. We have uh, you know knives on our belts and boots, uh, spurs on our boots, and all that. But uh, we're also very quiet and respectful, and we just want to eat our breakfast. And they just would not stop staring, <laughs> and it just so it was just like ah. Uh. Hey, what's up, everyone? James and Cuervo from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we're out at the lake, hoping to reel in some dinner and also uh, cooling off some as well. And today we decided to film a very short and easy video. We promised you guys a Q&A video since back in like January. It's now May, so we just kept putting it off and off. And uh, we haven't made a Q&A video since like August of last year. So I figured right now while we wait for some nibbles, some action, let's just go ahead and answer these questions that you guys have sent. Once again, apologies if the audio just isn't up to par. We're doing the best we can with these damn winds. And uh, yeah, please join us. Get yourself a cold one. And let's get to it. Cheers, everyone. Now, before we begin, we already have a whole playlist of Q&A, past Q&A videos. Relax, there, there are not a lot of them. I think there's only like five in that playlist. But a lot of the times when we ask for you guys to send us some questions, a lot of you folks haven't seen some of those videos, so we've already answered your questions. So there's one that I get a lot is, how did Corvo and I meet? And for those of you wondering, I have the video right here. And you'll find the answer right there. Uh, there's also another one that w always asks, you know, what are Guervo's top five musical influences for his music? And for that one, we're going to place that one right here. And then there's also a very common question that asks, you know, if we can, you know, camp and bushcraft and hunt wherever, anywhere in the world, where would it be? We've already answered it right here. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. Let's get these questions going. Granville Jones asks, James, when will we when will we see a collaboration with a fellow YouTuber on some different bushcrafting skills? I appreciate everything you do, sir. Thanks. Uh, sooner than you think. On June 1st, Cuervo and I are planning to drive to California, and we're going to collab with the channel Catch and Cook California. So we're going to do a lot of coastal foraging, fishing, uh, you know, for, uh, gathering, that kind of stuff. As of right now, you know, it's we don't really have an exact plan. We're just going to, you know get to the coast and do what we can you know because it's such a different environment from our dusty desert so that's happening pretty soon question number two comes from the christmas eve she asks do you prefer the southwest over the southeast what do you like about the southeast and uh sadly by default i'm going to prefer the southwest because we've never done anything in the southeast uh i don't know about you corvo but i have never stepped foot in my entire life in florida Louisiana, Arkansas, all that area. Uh, the farthest east I've gotten to is San Angelo, Texas. Oh no, Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, and that was long before we were doing any outdoors kind of stuff. I was a kid on vacation. So we would love to, just the opportunity has not come up yet. So hoping to one day, you know, do some fishing and, you know, crawdadding and all that in, in Louisiana and all that good stuff. Hunt on iguana in Florida. But uh, as of right now, we've never done it. So by default, the Southwest. So, question number three comes from Henchman Ben. Who is Cuervo listening now to now these days? Uh, I guess it all depends on the mood. A lot of um, things I like listening to because they're quirky or they're bouncy or they're very colorful in, in sound, I guess if that makes sense. And like from one day I'll go from like Black Sabbath to Norteñas and to you know just ambient kind of sounds but right now I'm listening to a band uh, two brothers they're called the Cactus Blossoms which they they carry a lot of the Southwest sound to them a lot of acoustic -y sounds and the I think it's very beautiful and I think a lot of the sounds echo a lot of my own techniques in guitars and stuff like and sorry in the sounds I make not in the guitars but and uh, right I'm also this never it never gets old listening to Gillian Welch and David Rawlings I think uh, David Rawlings is someone who I aspire to be guitar playing wise so I think he's just he's he works very beautifully between dissonance and harmonies and I think Gordwell does that a lot too and in my own personal things I like to 
kind of dabble in those kind of spectrums, I guess. And that's about it right now. But yeah. 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 There you go. Cool. So question number four asks, uh, this is asked by Jake Levesky. I hope I said your name correctly, my, your last name correctly, buddy. How to deal with nature calls. Number two is a morning deal. Um, one thing I've learned is just get it over with. Now, I'll be the first to say that I've never, I'm not to the point of being an outdoorsman where that just comes so naturally to me. Uh, I will take a running plumbing toilet any day of the week. So if it's not a big deal and I can wait, like say I'm staying overnight, and I could just wait to get to the gas station in the morning, making my way back to town. Or, you know, when I stop for breakfast at a restaurant, I could just go to the restroom. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but of course, I'll, you know, I always have toilet paper and stuff like that ready in case it, it does have to be done. And uh, you just got to be honest with yourself. If you do feel like you're going to be uncomfortable throughout the night, you know, while you're trying to sleep or something, uh, just take care of it. You know, it's one of those, it's like doing your taxes. The sooner you take care of it, you know, the better you'll feel. Uh... All right, just to have some little pointers in here. Uh, make sure you always carry disposable type of wipes, not the kind that has a little dude with the X over him and the toilet. <laughs> uh, those won't dissolve in the water. They'll just cause, a, it's just pollution in, in general. And, you know, make sure you carry the, the good kind in your vehicle and toilet paper. Or, and if you don't, and if you can't, just make sure to carry a plastic bag, you know, just throw that away and do your part for this earth. And, um, uh, well, yeah, go, go super far. Just make sure you can still see your campsite in the distance and uh, make sure that's well buried. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Hey folks, so I'm editing the video and I realized I accidentally deleted question number five, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, answer that one all over again. So Michelle Moss asks, is there a place that you've visited that you'll never go to again and why? And there's two places that I can think of right off the top of my head. Uh, one is Horseshoe Campground in Cloudcroft, New Mexico. So. You know, every time we want to take a break from, from the desert and, you know, see some forests, some pine trees, Cuervo and I often camp in Cloudcroft, New Mexico. Uh, you see a lot of videos there. And they have a, real, a lot of really nice campgrounds. Now, this one time last year, we had planned to ca go camp for three days over there. And all the campgrounds are closed. There's no explanation. It even says that they're open, you know, if you search online. But they were closed all except for one. So, you know, we were already there. We decided to just give that one a try, which is Horseshoe Campground. And we quickly realized why it's called Horseshoe Campground. The, the whole camp is surrounded, you know, it's hugged by a road. And, you know, you're hearing traffic all the time. You're hearing semi-trucks and they approach. You hear them, you know, passing by and you hear them leaving. And it gets old very quickly. You know, we're there to camp. We're trying to enjoy the sounds of, you know, uh, the campfire and crickets and stuff, and you're just hearing traffic nonstop. In the morning, you're trying to sleep, you're hearing traffic nonstop. So we had planned to stay there for three days. By the by, by the morning of the second day, we were out of there. Just a uh, terrible campground. Never gonna camp there again. Uh, now the second place I want to say it's more of just the wrong place at the wrong time. Just a lot of bad luck happened, uh, but it's gonna be Payson, Arizona. And I know I have a, some viewers that live in Payson here, so I apologize, folks. Um, you know, I'm not trying to badmouth your town, but last year, Guervo and I had planned to go camp with our buddy Shane right past Payson to, to do some camping, some primitive camping stuff. And last minute, he injured his hand. He, he cut his hand with a spoon knife, so he just kind of sat it out. So we, are, we had already gotten the time off of work and all that stuff, so Guervo and I decided to go anyway. And uh, once again, it's, it's, it's spring break during this time. And normally Payson's a calm town, but it's spring break. There's just so many people. The gas stations are packed. The restaurants are packed. Uh, the campgrounds were all full. Even trying to hike, there was people everywhere, which I find very frustrating when I'm, when I'm outdoors. Uh, we couldn't even find a, a hotel to stay. There was no vacancy anywhere. So it was just uh, just bad thing after bad thing. Uh, we would go eat at a mom-and-pop place to eat in the morning for breakfast. 
And, you know, there's a good amount of older white folks in that town, and they must have seen aliens walking through that door when Corvo and I sat in, uh, went in and sat down, because they're just, they would not stop staring at us. And, and I get it, you know, we, you know, we're walking around, we have, uh, you know, knives on our belts and boots, uh, spurs on our boots and all that, but uh, we're also very quiet and respectful, and we just want to eat our breakfast, and they just would not stop staring. <laughs> and it just so, it was just like, ugh. But uh, once again, I want to say it was just, you know, just bad timing, you know, and just things didn't go our way. Um, but, uh, yeah, we uh, towards the end, we kind of made the best of it, and we did do some fishing, caught some trout. We have that video, our EDC video, where uh, we did do some, some trout fishing, and that was really fun. And then after that, we decided to start, you know, heading back home. Question number six comes from It's Betos on Instagram, and he asks... Have you guys done a Grand Canyon rim to rim camping trip? Would you do it if you could? Most definitely. That sounds really cool. Arizona is one of our fa favorite places in the planet. We've never even been to the Grand Canyon. It's a little embarrassing. So, uh, yeah, we would love to do that. Um, yeah, well, definitely going to have to start organizing something like that for at least next year. So, definitely. Question number seven comes from Down Haven who asks... Favorite camp meals to impress when out with someone versus favorite easy meals alone? Uh, I wouldn't say to impress anyone, but definitely if I'm camping out with someone, so it's obviously going to be more people, uh, most of the time it's going to be a longer period of time. If I'm by myself, it's probably going to be an overnighter for the most part. So we definitely make bigger meals like green chili stew, for example, jambalaya, uh, something that's a little bit more complicated, more time consuming because we're not in a hurry and there's several of us. You know, whatever the case may be. So, you know, every time I camp with people, for the most part, unless it's like some, you know, very minimalistic kind of thing, yeah, we'll, we'll do something a little bit more substantial, some big pot of stew or something, as opposed to favorite easy meal is alone, uh, something simple like a, a steak. You know, you've seen me before, I'll, I'll cook a steak with like a little bit of like a, you know, instant rice on the side or instant mashed potatoes. Um, hell, sometimes, you know, I'll go so simple that it's like just a heat up a can of ravioli or, or make a, you know, some ramen. Very simple stuff if I'm going very lightweight and I'm leaving in the morning. Alright, so number eight, right, is from Yaria Samavan Garlan. It says, Cuervo Negro, what inspires you? What is your creative process? I love writing poetry, but I struggle with writer's block. Any suggestions? Well, what what inspires me is a number of things, I guess, uh, from nature to to random noises. Sometimes you hear a song you hear in the distance while you're driving or something. But uh, my creative process isn't really a, a, like a like a set thing. It it just happens randomly. Sometimes it happens at night. When I'm trying to sleep and I'm like I keep hearing this rhythm and I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I can't, I can't rest until like I record something that's going on. And uh, but I guess to help the creative process sometimes is you have to kind of force yourself to do something you don't want to do or you don't like doing or normally don't do. Like for me, I like going downtown and listening to the music that's playing there or going to the bar which is normally not my scene, but just listening to how the ambience is kind of captured in that moment. And it's just, you pick little pieces here and there and you start creating a story, whether it's it's verbally or auditorial, or even, even olfactory and like textile, like you're feeling something and it's bringing something, or, you know, just remembering something. Uh, and yeah. You just gotta remember that sometimes you can't force some things and the, the more you reach for it, the further it goes from you, if that makes sense. It's like sand, it becomes sand and it just starts slipping through your hands and, and you kind of just have to let it come to you and you just kind of have to let it take the wheel and just go with it and let it take you on this journey. and. Before you know it, you have a song, and you have a rhythm, and you have a poem, you have a story, you have a good visual, you have a good idea. The inception is, is all that matters, and whatever you take from it or from where you take it, 
I mean, that's all up to you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Question number eight is asked by our buddy John uh, Scott J. Marshall. He is a good friend of ours. He's also a Junkyard Fox patron. And he asks, exactly you can turn your lives and Junkyard Fox slash Guervo Negro into anything you wanted. What would it look like? Where would you live? Would you move to a remote location Cody Lundin style? Would Guervo Negro go on tour full time, etc.? So just to kind of simplify that question, I think he's asking, you know, what would you do if you had your way? If you could choose your future, like say in five years from now, where would you live and so on? Uh, so I'll go first on that one. One, I think Junkyard Fox, I would love to do this full time without having to work a day job. So I'm just fully, you know, creatively creating things. I know that sounded really stupid. Um, two, own private land, own a ranch or something, maybe in like Arizona, where we don't have to deal with people, you know, when we're trying to film and, you know, because we got to stop filming every once in a while here. Uh, people walking by or, you know, loud cars and so on and so on. So. Uh, yeah, a private ranch, that'd be nice, you know, have some livestock, have some places to fish, to camp, and we don't got to worry about, you know, other people kind of thing, that'd be nice. And uh, Junkyard Fox would be far beyond just a, an outdoor channel. It'd be more like Junkyard Fox Productions. And not only are we filming, you know, camping and catch and cook stuff, but we're also filming short films and Corvo Negro music videos and, and uh, stuff like that. I will not rest until we have action figures made of us. I'm talking like those really sweet like $100 Mafex or Naka type action figures where they, they have like removable hats. We would have removable knives and you know all that good stuff. You know the Corvo Negra action figure would come with a guitar you know so on and so forth. So that would be really cool. I mean who doesn't want to be their own boss right? What about you Corvo? Um, I guess the same. I would like to see Junker Fox to become like a production group. Uh, it's more, mostly for creativeness, even even to reach out to local talents and stuff like that, filmmakers, storytellers, musicians, whatever the like. Even have its own like little tumblers and stuff, drink Yard Fox tumblers <laughs> and sweaters and stuff. But uh, I don't know, I think and in general, I think Cuervo is more of a, I guess you can say like a setting or a, I don't know how to explain it well. It, like the music is the music, right? But I think it's more of a, of a storytelling way rather than it being more of a tour kind of thing. Um, I would personally... If I would go on tour, I would go on tour as myself. Maybe a hair metal or country music or something, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I would like to see Cuervo Negro more incorporated into filmmaking and more into bringing alive the Southwest and, you know, just, just becoming an entity of itself. And I guess the dream life is just to buy an RV yeah, hitch up with the wife and just travel around the country and play music, and that's it. <laughs> yep. And, yeah. Also, I definitely can see Cuervo through better business connections. You could definitely see Cuervo being played in, like, Red Dead Redemption 3. You could definitely <laughs> see him landing deals in a, in a Quentin Tarantino mm -hmm. movie, something like that. It's just all about business connections and stuff like that. So I definitely see there's a lot of potential here. To go past Junkyard Fox, um, once again, it's just it's just a lot of business. Yeah, it's the business. Okay, so last question is from Martyr Maverick. He says, "Hey James, are there anything strange that you carry as part of your EDC or adventures? Something you picked up along your travels, like religious, spiritual, or unique items?" Love to hear it. Awesome videos, as always. Um, well, I'm going to take this one, at least, I guess. But I always carry two things. One of them is my, sorry, my medicine bag, which I think is important in a sense to... Uh, it, it's more of a spiritual healing kind of thing. And inside of it, I carry things from 
all across the southwest from um, a little bit of creosote to ashes from our camps and a little bit a lava rock I found a shell and a little bit of Palo Santo I carry that mostly for my mom she's a uh, well it's believed that Palo Santo is it's like sage where it, it heals the space around you so the smoke is it's more of a spiritual healing kind of thing and I always like to think that it's it, it's it's cleansing our space in our sense. And then the other part is uh, an arrowhead and a wolf's tooth. Uh, the story about the wolf's tooth comes from, it's more from uh, my sister. She's what she would call a soothsayer and a spiritual healer, uh, a medium in a sense. And she told me that there's, that there's two giant wolves that are guarding me at all times. And for me, it's kind of like a totem or a charm that kind of connects me to them. And, you know, you ask them for protection and for for guidance and things like that. And they don't really help much in the wild, but it helps, in a sense, keep you sane in a, in a way and kind of always carry home with you. And I always believe that there's... The physical world and there's the metaphysical world realm sorry world sorry. and each are kind of entwined in itself and it only takes a matter of knowing where to look and how to speak to it to connect to it man that's a that's my weird edc <laughs> that's it let's go uh you know Qu cuervo just answered his very eloquently you know He's far more of the spiritual one of the group. He's far more of, you know, beyond the physical plane and there's you know, more spiritual things. He also comes from a family that's more into, you know, these things. So he his eyes open more to that concept. Um, I would say I'm far more of the very basic, very pragmatic kind of guy. I'm more, you know, so I don't really carry that kind of stuff. Even if you notice, like with my hats, you know, where a lot of gentlemen will put a feather on their hats or something. I'm putting a match or, or a flashlight something more logical um so i would say I'm, I'm definitely less spiritual um however i do tend to carry a lot of um and you've seen this before you've seen this, these in my edc videos and stuff uh i'm more of a taking trophies kind of guy um so last year i hunted a wild boar in south texas first time i ever hunted something that large and uh, i kept the bullet shell and i put it on one of my hats as a you know as a memento of this great journey and this great hunt and you know that kind of stuff and um and it's always going to be a reminder of that first time i did that now fast forward to just a couple of months from now you know i i caught some crabs off the coast of oregon you know I, i'm a hunter that's the best way i could describe myself in any form beyond what you see and you know i've always wanted to hunt crabs and cook them because like i said that's just you know i love catching cooks and that kind of stuff and, you know, I kept one of the legs and I preserved it. And now it's in one of my other hats. So, you know, I'm more into that. I wouldn't say that may maybe they rep represent something concrete, but they're just good mementos for me to remember of worthy adventures, of worthy successes, that kind of stuff. So, you know, a little bit similar and then a little bit different. Well, folks, that is about the long and short of this video. It was really fun to answer these questions. I hope you gentlemen and, and ladies really enjoyed this Q&A session. If you have any follow-up questions, comments, critiques, anything like that, comment down below. And uh, we'll try to do another one of these in a couple months. We don't like to do them too often because, you know, they can be considered something like a filler video. But, uh, yeah, just weather's been very difficult. And with fire restrictions, we really can't do much else as of right now. So... In the meantime, we just decided to, to, to get this one done. So that's about it for us. Thank you so much for joining Cuervo and I. And cheers to everyone watching. And we'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.